What do you do when you buy a Corvette? You have fun with it. So now after three years, 32,000 miles, three windshields, four sets of tires, and a whole lot of races, we're here to answer one very simple question. What's it like to own a Corvette? Now let's start by stating the obvious, because honestly, it's kind of hard not to. We love driving this car. Come to daddy! I mean, we gave it a top rated award, twice. It's a good car. Or as our boss once said, I love this car so much. So, what's the uh, C8 Corvette like to drive? Cake, man. Like, this thing's easy to drive. The steering's got great feel, it's very agile. They manage to combine great handling with a comfortable ride. When you hop into it, you realize from a power standpoint, you're not really wanting more. It's so quick to turn. There's just tons of traction. It just feels very alive. The reality is if you've never driven a mid-engined sports car or even isn't getting into supercar territory before, then this is a great place to start. As long as you don't need a back seat, like it really is a pretty practical car and something you can use every day. And it's not just that the Corvette is great to drive, it's comfortable too. And look at this interior. It has held up really well over time. If you've owned a Corvette in the past, you've probably dealt with squeaks and rattles and creaks and probably a lot of glue and plastic that didn't age too well over time. So far, this has not only been a big uptick in quality, but also longevity. Our complaints about the interior are minor. <laughs> this square steering wheel is still really stupid. And these buttons. There are 47 million of them all in a row, so sometimes it's a little hard to find the one you want when you're driving. Our favorite feature by far, the single biggest thing we talk about that's not driving related, is the nose lift. Because if you've owned a Corvette in the past, you also know that you scrape on every single driveway. But now, it's got it taken care of for you. And it's also GPS activated, so when you come home, the car automatically knows, and you don't scrape. The nose lift on the Corvette is awesome. I am pretty anal when it comes to scraping body parts, even if it's like just the plastic arrow bits on it. So I use the nose lift every single chance I get. You can basically geotag a location. So if you have a driveway close to your house, it's kind of steep, you get close, it lifts itself up. I'm not sure I ever quite had enough confidence. I didn't want to take the risk that I'd wipe the nose off. So I tended to do it manually, but yeah, I would never buy a mid-engine supercar without the nose lift system. The Stingray is somewhat practical. It has less cargo space than past Corvettes for sure, but this is one of the only supercars I can think of that you can fit a full-on golf bag in the back. And it's got a frunk, perfect for your Amazon returns. And then we have the tire debacle. We've been through four sets of tires in about 32,000 miles, but only one of those sets is due to just regular wear and tear. We've had really bad luck popping these tires. We've done it three times as a matter of fact. And then we've had to replace the windshield twice. In total, we spent $1,200 on two replacement wheels, $5,000 in tires, and just about two grand in windshields. And to be fair, neither of these two things are the car's fault at all, but it's been quite an expensive process. The good news is that regular maintenance, AKA things we didn't do on accident, has been a relatively easy process. This car in three years of ownership has spent about 25 days at the dealer in total. But keep in mind, a lot of our hard driving and racing has meant that some of the services were needed sooner. The oil life on the Stingray was toast at about 4,800 miles, and we needed a new transmission filter at 7,500 miles. Because the transmission filter neck is really deep down in the engine bay, the dealer ended up charging us a little bit extra for parts and labor. All told, an oil change and a transmission service was about $800. Ouch. In total, we've spent about $1,300 on regular maintenance. Can we just take a moment, realize what I'm sitting in right now? This is a mid-engine supercar with almost 500 horsepower, zero to 60 in less than three seconds, made by Chevrolet that competes against things way more expensive than this. And if you need any proof of that, we've done drag races, hot laps, and of course you drags. The Stingray was a fierce competitor every time. I think the one experience that sticks in my mind was the first U-Drags against the CT5 V Blackwing. And it was just, the Corvette's outpowered. Obviously, the Cadillac's got a big supercharger on it. I think stupid fast. But the Corvette, basically, because it has shorter gearing, because it weighs less, it kept up, it launched harder, and it stayed in front for much longer than I thought it would. C8 versus M2. I felt 
bad for the M2, but you juxtapose it next to the C8, which is a purpose-built sports car. It's got a mid-engine, it's got rear drive, it doesn't have any rear seats, so it's not compromised the way that the M2 is. Just driving the, the Corvette after the M2, you're like, why would anybody look at this M2 even? From a performance standpoint, it's no contest. The Corvette launched beautifully. It was perfect every time. It would break into the corner with so much confidence. It would turn the corner and then the gearbox um, was amazing. It just made me appreciate the Corvette that much more. Corvette versus Corvette in the U-Drags, we all knew the Stingray was not gonna win, but like, the Stingray really held its own, and it held its own for a while. And that just shows, like, despite the Z06's extra power, how hard it is to put that power down. It also speaks to just, like, how damn good the, like, Stingray is on its own. Like most sports cars, the Chevy's got a sophisticated stability control system that has different levels. So if you're feeling your way into a racetrack for the first time, leave it all on, then you can gradually turn it off as your experience and confidence grows. You can brake really late with the Corvettes. They've got really nice brakes, really nice brake feel. Um, and because of the mid-engine and that responsive steering, you can turn in kind of late and really get it around the corner. But then because of the Corvette's PTM or performance traction management, you can pretty much get on the throttle as aggressively as you want and you can let the system handle the exit. That PTM system is world class. So that's basically what I would do is you just use launch control, get it off the line, slam on the brakes, and then just lean on the PTM system until the car is relatively straight. That engine is really responsive, just like everything else in that car. So it's easy to like get good rear end feel and power out of the corner on the way back. But ultimately, if, if your objective is to drive that thing as quickly as possible, the car does a lot of the work for you. And then just, you know, look over to the camera, say something pithy and haul ass. There we go, there we go. Woo, this car launches hard. So as we say goodbye to our Stingray, we have one more very important question left to answer. Will we lose our ass on this? <laughs> Let's break this all down. We paid $80,660 for the VET about four years ago, and we just sold it for $61,000, which equals $19,660 worth of depreciation. Add in about $9,500 worth of expenses, the maintenance, wheels, tires, and windshields, and the grand total cost to own this car was just under 30 grand. For four years of constant hard driving and enjoyment, that's not a horrible price to pay. You know, the hype surrounding this car started years before it ever hit the road. So it actually blows my mind a little bit that we're now at the end of our C8 ownership experience. This car has fulfilled its place at Edmunds time and time again. We're gonna miss it. But I wanna hear from you. What do you think about the Stingray's place in automotive history? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for watching.